Hello there. Jamie here, content creator for the channel Yotar Gear, or Jothergy, as some of you know it. Now today we're at Reddish North, a station opened in 1875, known simply as Reddish until 1951. This is the main building, closed because it's a Sunday. But we can go and have a little look at the track and the bridge together. Oh, that mural's in better days up there. <laughs> One thing I loved when I lived in Reddish was being so close to this station because it's on the New Mills to Manchester Piccadilly line. So I could either go and see my dad in New Mills or go and have a mooch around Manchester. Check out the old Victorian architecture here with the steel beams holding the place up. Two tracks. If you look down there, it's a very, very, very straight line all the way to Manchester. That. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this footbridge is original from the time of the opening of the station. Certainly needs a coat of paint, I'll give it that. So what is the plan for this walk? Well, we've got two hours free. I think we should go and explore North Reddish together. Over the years I used to collect a whole load of old photographs of Reddish that I found online and in books. And one particular one is of the building that stood at the top of here, the Railway Inn, long since demolished and replaced by new flats. Let's just try and overlay the old picture over this now. Station Road, and on the sign you can see it also says Sandfold Lane. Now along here was the original settlement of Reddish, just on the other side of what was the canal. The Reddish Branch Canal that ran five miles all the way from the Peak Forest Canal down to the top of Lancashire Hill by Nelstrop Mill. You can just tell by the way that the road goes up and down that this is where the bridge was at one point over the canal. Just here next to this big impressive house. Now, I can't remember how old these are, but this sandfold is literally like the very oldest buildings in Reddish. These and these. Back on Station Road again not really a road that goes anywhere to be honest other than over the old Fallowfield Loop which was the railway line and to the secret lake that only the people of Reddish know of. Proper old 1960s trading estate this. See all the houses over there on the left? Years ago that was a good yard that. When I first moved to Reddish in 2007 they were just clearing all that site. I'm sure my friend Sue said they used to call them the Bobo Sheds or the Bobby Sheds because it's where they used to put the trains to sleep on a night. In fact, this is another place that I've got an old photograph of because I recognise those playing fields over there. In years gone by, this is where you'd have the trains thundering through. All a bit overgrown with brambles through this bit. Good paint can't save bad paintings. It's a bit rough and ready down this little end of Reddish. Obviously had a burnt out car just there. It's just a weird little place that no one had ever come to really. Unless you're me and you're making a video. And here guys, you have the secret lake of Reddish. Even got a couple of people over there having a swim. So it must be pretty clean. I have seen people in here before fishing as well. Just like these chaps. Last time I wandered down here, there was a lady sort of lay on the floor with a friend. She says, I'm not drunk. I have got a can of beer though. Do you want a can of beer? I said, no, I'm driving. I can't, but so. thanks for the offer. So anyone that's never heard of the secret lake in Reddish, for those who know, well, you know, keep it under your hat. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the history of it is that there were two of these lakes 
which was sort of ponds to do with one of the factories nearby. See, that stuff's well done. I like a bit of graffiti when it's well done like that by a proper artist. Oh wow, it just goes the whole length here. Look at this one. Good life. Yes it is. Now this up ahead is Sandfold Lane, which is basically a dump. <laughs> the bit on the left literally was the dump. And just over the road, you've got IJK Scrap Metal. You'll have heard of them on the radio. So this now is pretty much Levensume rather than Reddish. So what I'll do is I'll show you a bit of a lovely mural down here and then we will head back into Reddish. IJK oh, Scrap Metal. You show us the metal, we'll show you the cash. Furious little place. We've got the old chimney there, which is probably from God knows when. And then this is a bit of a weird one where they built an extra story on the building. They've been building this for years, for as long as I remember. The bricks don't even match. <laughs> this is Mount Lane, this. Nice to see all the Asian lads there playing cricket in Greenbank Park. How oh, fantastic is that painting on the side of that with the robin. And here's another mural that I've never spotted. Plus, whoever's cooking, whatever they're cooking, well, it smells bloody gorgeous. So welcome to Leventune, people. That there looked like some sort of community orchard, just a little overgrown. They really have gone all out with the painted murals to try and brighten the place up a bit. And it is at this place, at this funny kink in the road that you cross from, Manchester into Stockport. And one interesting fact about Nelstrop Road here is that the houses are in Stockport, but the road itself is in Manchester. And because Manchester doesn't consider this road having any houses on it, well, they've never resurfaced it in forever. That sign's been here since 2007, I can tell you that for free. The twin towns of Stockport, Béziers in France and Heilbronn in Germany. Once again, we cross back over the Fallowfield Loop, the old railway line, which for us was one of the main attractions for moving to Reddish, because before we had a car, it allowed us to cycle along the loop to Fallowfield. For those not in the know, the estate on the right coming up is called Poets Corner because you've got streets named after people like Alfred Lord Tennyson, Mary Shelley, Henry Chaucer, etc, etc. Great literary giants. This is Longford Road West. Nothing more to add really. Other than the fact that I've got some photos of here before it was all tarmacked. Next to the shops up ahead where the new houses are, there used to be a pub called the Reddish Vale Pub, which inevitably got knocked down, just like the fir tree did up at the top of the road. Once again, you can see how the road rises and falls again, and this is where there was another bridge across the Reddish Branch Canal. Literally here. Reddish Park this. So you see this long green grassed area is where the canal was that got filled in in the 60s. My old friend Fred who lived here, who lived here all his life, he remembers before the Fir Tree pub was Fir Tree Farm and the farmer used to give him tuppence to go with a stick and hit the rats in the barn. Anyway, it was people like Fred and people on the allotment that told me stories of why the canal did shut in the 60s. It was just full of rubbish, people were falling in and drowning. 
and it wasn't used anymore for boats so but i have read that over the years there are plans to try and reopen the canal or at least some of it because you couldn't get all the way back down to lancashire hill because a lot of it's been built on now got the old bowling greens here on the right this is where at easter time you'd have the egg hunt normally i remember going in here a couple of times actually it was a creepy little place all dark and full of cobwebs and stuff oh man when my kids were little i literally lived on that part with them here and as well as that we'd come and play tennis down here i see they've taken away the fencing around the tennis courts now by far the greatest loss to all of Reddish, the greatest crime ever committed was the knocking down of the fir tree pub on the corner here. Let's go and have a little look at what remains. Not even tennis courts anymore, they're just tarmacked over and you've got a bit of a basketball court over at the end. Six years since I lived round here now, where does it go? This hoarding here, this cladding and the fence, well, this was the site of the pub. You can just about see the remains of it, the foundations. So sad. Many an adventure had in here. Over on this side you had the pool room, which was like the bar area. At the back you had the outside seating area. On an evening you'd have live acts on over in the far corner. Before I call it a day on the video, I just want to show you one more building, which is an old school, which was used during World War II for the recuperation of Canadian troops. True story. It looks like it's a school again. It did get bought by some businessman who was going to turn it all into flats. But then there was a big petition by the locals to keep it as its original function, a school. And plant pot. lovely wrought iron railings we live in different times don't we people stunning just absolutely stunning here's a question for you all if you had a time machine would you choose to go forwards or backwards in time and why when you've lived in a place Every little street corner holds some memory for you. I remember when our Fiat Punto was pretty much dying and we tried to get rid of it because we'd bought the new Renault Scenic. We found a buyer up here and he'd signed the documents and he'd paid us, but driving home the engine warning light came on and he was fuming. He said, I'm not taking it, I'm not taking it. And in the end, we pretty much begged him to take it for literally, what, 200 quid? Here comes the drizzle. Now somehow guys, you know I said I was doing five and a half miles a day, I've dropped to an average of five miles a day. Which to be fair is still better than what I have been doing the last few years. But is that a good rule of thumb? To set your targets 10% higher than what you want to achieve? Possibly. So where are we now? We're approaching Thames side and Dane Bank, just down here on Windmill Lane. And crossing over the railway tracks. This is your new mills to Manchester Line. And just behind that bridge is Reddish North Station. Well, exactly. 109 days now into the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Why don't they just go home and have a cup of tea? And so to finish today's mooch around North Reddish, I'll leave you with a few words. Slava Ukraini, Geroyam Slava, Jakuyu.